All right. Good morning, everybody. Again, welcome to the open house live futures trading room. Today's day two. And I hope you guys had a really great day one, had a little bit of taste, flavor of what we do here at Trade Out Loud. All right. I see a very I, I see a lot of new faces in here. So I just want to introduce myself. My name is Anka Metcalf, and I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutLoud.com, which is an education uh special an education uh, trading education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, and invest in uh, the markets. Whether it's the futures market, the stock market, the crypto market, whether you're doing options or common, whatever you guys are doing, we have a little bit for everybody in here and we tackle it on the profession as professionals. Um, I have been a professional independent trader for more than 20 years. Prior to becoming a professional independent trader, I come with 10 plus years in investment banking. Also run a swing trading service for stocks and ETFs since 2010, and Trade Out Loud was born in 2010. This was our first program that we launched Trade Out Loud with. Later on, we added the Futures Trading Room in the concept that you guys see it here today in 2017. We have over 300 active members in our community. Uh, we uh, uh, and I have managed day trading and swing trading accounts for my clients as well. We do offer trading education for swing and day trading as well. And I do specialize in high velocity, uh, high velocity trades. You guys had a glimpse uh, yesterday of the caliber of trades that I look for and the precision that I look for in my trading when it comes to entry stops, targets and managing the trade. And most importantly, is risk. Risk is the one thing that is going to literally make you a millionaire or it's going to keep you poor. So um, maybe today, if we have time, if not, maybe tomorrow, uh, we will talk a little bit about money management and we're going to talk a little bit about position sizing and the importance of the position sizing factor. All right. I'm also the designer of an institutional proprietary trading system that is based on price support resistance, uh, eight layers of price support resistance. That's why we're looking for confluence areas every single time we identify and try to identify a trade. I look for a specific uh, trigger times because I have been trading for so long. So over 23, 23 to 25 years now. Um, I have developed uh, in my early years uh, specific trigger times. You're not going to find these anywhere on the internet. And yesterday I shared my specific trigger times with you guys uh, for the morning session and how the morning session operates. So let's get going, everybody, and let's continue. Uh, risk disclaimer, all information provided by myself on Trade Out Loud is for educational purpose only. It should not be construed as investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, forex, or any instrument of any kind. I'm pretty sure you guys know by now that trading involves a really high level of risk. Literally may not be suitable for all traders or all investors because you could lose your money if you don't know what you're doing. So before deciding to trade, you should carefully consider what your objectives, your level of experience, and of course, your risk appetite. Individual performance depends upon each person's skills, time commitment, and real effort. Uh, results may not be typical and individual results will vary. You must do your own research and make your own trading decisions. If you guys want to get a hold of us, uh, you can find us at tradeoutloud.com. You can find us on um social media our handle is uh, trade out loud or you can uh, email me with any specific trading questions about uh anything under the sun trading and my team will get back to you on that of course uh you can also email us further details about our programs all right, some rules to the game as always, because you guys are new here. Uh, no questions in the first hour because we focus on trading. Uh, we will allocate time at the end of the trading session for Q&A. So no question is going to remain unanswered. Small accounts can also participate in any kind of trade setup using micros. So if you're here for the very first time, please watch the dynamics. Every single trade that I call in the room, I personally take, uh, and also I urge everybody to position size. Position sizing is key, and re we recommend traders to use one or two percent of their account size risk per trade. Um, I use one percent because for me, day trading is a lot more 
riskier than swing trading. And I use two to 3% in my swing trading account. Typically how I do things, uh, when I hit target one, I typically exit half of my position. However, the price action uh, shows and indicates continuation. I may hold the position into target two or three or a uh, trail as a, um, as, as trading it as one lot versus multiple lots. Uh, if trading one contract, full or micro trades will look to trail since no partial profits are, um, and exits are possible. So example of a trade, for example, if we're going to take a look at VM and ESMP, uh, in the in the chat box, you will see a post like ESL or S, depending on whether long or short, and you're going to see the parameters. The first parameter is going to be the entry, the 4431, for example, times this by 4420, that's going to represent the stop. And TGT represents targets. These are the targets that we will have uh, as an example in the trading room. So it's going to be 4431 by 4420. And that's long, for example, or if it's going to be short, it's going to be 4420 by 4431, obviously. Um, so market is fast and uh, at times, and I may not have the time to post uh, if we have strong momentum into the market, I may not have time to post it uh, in the chat box, but I will mention it on the mic several times so everybody can hear the parameters loud and clear. Uh, all call trades will be trailed by myself on the microphone. You're not going to be left alone, so I'm going to be hand-holding you through the trades. Please be on time because if you're late, we will not answer questions to already discussed matters. So what to expect? Well, in a few moments, we're going to begin with the pre-market game plan. We're going to take a look at the four major indices, gold and oil. We're going to be analyzing the current market context. We're going to go over news, analyze, analyze the impact of price action around the news. And we have uh, news at 8.30 that we're going to discuss in a moment. Uh, major earnings reports from the prior day plus current day open. We're going to be identifying trading opportunities. So there's going to be some solid time into the room. And that is because I am stalking, literally trying to find the best trading opportunity for myself and obviously for you guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and try to identify these high patterns, uh, determine the execution strategy, the parameters of the trade, and of course, live trailing and live management. The only thing that I'm not going to be doing for you is the position sizing. This, you have to do it for uh, on your own because I don't know each and everybody's account size. We're over a thousand people now in the room. We focus on momentum, continuational patterns, trend trading, counter trend trading, and swing trading as well. So we talked a little bit about how the trades will be called. You're gonna hear me on the mic, discuss the trade in advance before posting it into the trading room. I will be using caps. If there is a momentum trade, there will be no time to post in the chat box. However, I will be calling it on the mic well before the price gets into the entry zone. We only use limit orders and we never hop in trades. Uh, and uh, you're going to find out the entry really ahead of time. All right. So today is Wednesday. So um, it is November 15th. We're in the middle of the month and we're just a, a three days away from options expiration day, which is on Friday, which makes it a, I would say, rather difficult week. Typically, it is a really difficult week. We're going to see how what kind of trading day we're going to have today. So major earnings uh, in on Wednesday before the market target. Uh, reported earnings, uh, TJ Maxx reported earnings. These are two of my top watches. And after the close today, we have Cisco, which is likely to impact NASDAQ. So we're going to keep an eye on NASDAQ as we're heading into tomorrow. And tomorrow, we have Walmart that is reporting before the market. So what that means is that all eyes are going to be on the Dow. All right. In terms of economic events this morning at 8.30, you probably have saw your charts. You had some big spikes around 8.30, and that is because we have the core PPI. We have the core retail sales, Empire State Manufacturing Index, PPI, and the retail sales. Uh, at 9.30, so in a few, like uh, 20 minutes from now, uh, we have an FOMC member bar that will be speaking at 10 o'clock. We have business inventories. And as always, because it's Wednesday, we have the crude oil inventories at 10.30. All right. So 
Uh, with that being said, let's get into our analysis. We're going to be sharing the screen. First off, we're going to take a look at the levels and see where we're at right ahead of the open before we dive into our game plan for uh, the trading session right now. So uh, we have the Dow, which is uh, 40 points. Uh, we have the S&P, which is nine points up. NASDAQ is 68 points up. Uh, closing in on half a percent, and we have a flat RTY right ahead of the open. Uh, we have a flat uh, gold right ahead of the open, and we have uh, oil, which is down 1%. It's down almost a buck, so 80 cents down. All right, so what we're seeing from here is that um, we're having a pretty balanced market in the sense of structure and in the sense of percentage. So now it's time to take a look at our uh, technical analysis screen and see what we have going on for the trading session today and what our pick is going to be if we can determine the pick of the day uh, uh, right now, right ahead of the open, or we need some extra confirmation uh, from uh, the market at the open. We're going to start off with NASDAQ. I have four charts. I have the one hour, the daily, the weekly, and the monthly charts. And uh, we're going to take a look and see uh, what is going on today. So first of all, we're going to start with yesterday's session because yesterday's session was bullish. Uh, right off the bat, we were bullish yesterday. We looked for a continuation higher and one thing that I wanted to show you um, right after this analysis, uh, something very interesting that we talked about, about the lunch fade, all right? And how you should be focusing on higher time frames because those higher time frames are going to give you the scoop, whether you're going to have a pullback or not, instead of shorting it into the tops, like all the novice traders are doing. Uh, getting stubborn and getting in the way of institutional traders that literally, if you keep on doing that, they're going to be having you for breakfast. All right. So here we have it yesterday, big, massive wind bar that literally erased the prior resistance high. And we're trading in the stratosphere right now. We're trading into the 16,000. Like I said yesterday, the ultimate trajectory for NASDAQ is going to be the 16,000. Here's what I think this number is so important right now. And I think that throughout this week, we're going to be coiling around the 16,000. Is because on Friday we have option expiration and typically they love to coil these indices that are around, guess what, whole numbers. And we are trading into the whole number area uh, in uh, throughout the indices. Do you want to guess? NASDAQ is trading around 16,000. S&P is trading around 4,500. 35,000 for the Dow and 1,800 for Russell. So we're getting there closely. It was on a mission to get these indices right there. And now things are going to become choppier as we're getting into Friday. All right, so we're gonna be using specific strategies that are uh, more balanced for the uh, activity that we may have on Friday on the option expiration. I don't trade option expiration, but I do highlight for my trades, uh, for my traders um, that are a little bit more aggressive and uh, they do want to risk one R or half an R on a trade on that day. And um, uh, we'll see how that goes. All right. So basically, we're into resistance into NASDAQ. We're at 16,000. Mission accomplished on the weekly and mission accomplished on the monthly as well. We came in with a rotation. We're at the top of the resistance zone. Definitely here, we need either a pullback or we need a base in order to start with our new leg up that I mentioned yesterday into the prior high. So for the current session right now, we're still trading above the 10 exponential moving average. And like I mentioned in yesterday's trading session, look for signs that are showing uh, lunch fades. The lunch fades, as the name implies, they only happen around lunchtime during the doldrums when the volume is thinner. So a lot of traders are leaving the trading desk and ultimately they're closing some positions. But you can see here that definitely we didn't really have this pullback happen because we had a base. So that means that institutions are still accumulating and they're still invested into 
indices, into stocks, into everything. So basically what we have is still ongoing trend. We have a nice equidistant, uh, uh, let's say, trending phase with all the moving averages. They're all fanning out. And as long as we're going to be defending this tiny MA, I think that the price action is still ready to continue higher. And most likely the goal for the morning, let's say for the first hour, is to get it back into the 16.050. Uh, and yes, it can potentially go higher. We have a peak, which is uh, here. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have a peak here that was already accomplished yesterday by trading above the 15,522. So the next area that we're going to be looking for is into that uh, 16,062. We're not far away from that. In fact, the, the fact that we're here right now into the zone shows us that the price action is ready to tackle and probably digest this high. If it's not going to digest this high, we're going to have a pullback. But if it's going to digest this high, the next target is going to be the prior high. So we're going to be neutral towards bullish neutral because we're having a little bit of red ticks right now, uh, but bullish because we're still trading on the 1H above the 10 EMA. And now we're going to continue with the S&P. The S&P still holding above the 10 EMA. You can see here a nice projection higher in today's session because we did create a new high. We still have room for higher, uh, the high that we had from September into the uh, uh, 4566. And you can see here, we still have a lot of room to 4600 and 4630 to 4635. So we still have room to go. Uh, NASDAQ, however, has already accomplished its mission. It's right there right now, right into resistance. The question is, is S&P going to continue higher uh, or is it going to stall just like NASDAQ does? So far, we're having a nice balance throughout the indices. You can see here that the price action is trying to get into this 20 SMA. And the longer this base is going to take place here, even if it's an ascending base, it's still a base. It's still very bullish. The price action is really not going to do anything. You really need to see some kind of pattern formation in order to, um, you know, kind of like uh, we need to see, for example, and I would go ahead and, you know, kind of like look at this 30 minute to see how we close. And that's going to be at 930. That's going to be my gauge there. And depending on how we close, that is going to be an indication whether we're going to look for some pullbacks or we're going to still be bullish. But at this point, we're still very bullish. The price action is still green. Uh, we're uh, almost 10 points up and we're still uh, holding the 10 and the 20 SMA right here. Then we have the Dowski. Uh, Dow has been um, strong as well. Peekable high in today's session, just challenging the prior topping tail candle here at 35,000 from September 20th. And we still have resistance into the 35, 3, 35,300. So that means that the price section, yes, it can still go higher. One thing that I wanted to note and keep in mind, it's valid for all the indices. Uh, when you're looking at daily charts, you're going to see that the price action is somewhere in the stratosphere. It's already there at the moon because it's so extended from minor support, which is at 34,300. And it went there without a hiccup or uh, it, it literally took it by storm to the upside. So there is still potential for pullbacks. Uh, 34,500 to 34,300 possible pullbacks if we have some negative impact into the market. Uh, keep it in mind, the market can roll and can go uh, can go lower as well. But we're going to keep an open mind. So far, we have a lot of indecision that is happening right now. In fact, I'm looking at this four hour as well. And you can see that we may potentially have a pullback all the way to 34,800. So that means that the price action, if the price action is going to show us a formation that takes out the 900, again, the word is you need to see a setup that is below the 900 and that will show us a possible short into the 800 zone according to the 4H chart. And then we have lastly, we have the RTY, which was ballistic in yesterday's trading session. Mission accomplished, came into this confluence level of that we talked about between 25 and 30. 
Uh, it's getting ready for a rotation. However, it needs to take all the clutter out of, from the core of this range into the 1850. So 1850 is going to be a big line in the sand. If over above 1850, then it's going to start escalating towards the 2000 level, which is huge for Russell. Uh, intraday. So we're going to uh, take it to the 40s chart a little bit. And we're seeing here that we have an indecision candle. So we're going to be uh, bearish, but not necessarily. Again, the word of the day is going to be confirmation. So we need to see some kind of a set of formation that is going to take out the 1800. Because usually what happens, you have these institutions that are doing four cells at the open. Uh, and then uh, what they're doing is they're shaking the tree. They're taking everybody out uh, so they can buy some more contracts from those traders that are stopping out and even algos that are stopping out. It's something that they do at their desks. Uh, so we want to see if this is going to be a four sell event and then they're going to buy, 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 or this is going to be uh, uh, institutions that are uh, taking, peeling off some of the contracts that they are invested in. And then, uh, so basically that's going to be the game plan, 1800. Uh, then we have oil. Um, that is literally trading within inside yesterday, within inside last week's parameters. I'm sorry, I'm looking right here onto the weekly. Uh, again, it's showing signs of weakness today. Uh, signs of weakness. Why? Because it already did a daily sell formation. This is very bearish. This has the possibility of retracing back into the $75. You have a lot of confluence here. The price action is trading under the MA. So yes, price action is becoming weaker. Then lastly, we have GC here. Uh, so GC, uh, we uh, in the gold, obviously. Uh, gold has started to move a little bit in yesterday's trading session. It still got, it still got the pop above this uh, 50 SMA. So this is actually good news. But the question is, it's still very early in the week to determine whether we have a confirmation of higher. Because at this point in time, we need to get it over 2,000 in order to have that confirmation. We're not there yet. And we're barely trading right now into the 60s. We have a huge topping tail here, according to the 4H. And you could see here that, uh, let me just put it back to the 1H here. We have a high, higher high, and then we're getting back down. So any kind of 1H rotation in GC may show us that the price may still go higher. So I would say top watch for GC is going to be the one hour and not any kind of five minute, 15 minute, or any kind of smaller time frame. All right. So this is my game planning for the day. I just want to take a quick look here at ZB. And these are the bonds just to have because we have the time. We still have five minutes left. All right, so uh, bonds are still coiling. So after we had the rotation in yesterday's trading session, like, wow, doji, doji, and up really tight stop, delivered about two hours plus into this uh, uh, into this move. Uh, we still have the resistance into the um, one, 115 zone. And you can see here that it's pulling back. It's not ready for any kind of action at this point in time. So CB, this. Uh, not ready yet. All right. So I think that this is enough analysis for now. Bottom line, as a conclusion, this is what we're going to be doing. Okay. Number one, what do we need to do? Look for confirmation for the downside for the pullback. Uh, and if we have that, we're going to start shorting. Uh, number two is the price action is still trading into the bullish area. So any kind of uh, 30 minute or 1H rotation is going to swing us back to the highs and probably start creating new highs. You can see here that the price action is not really digesting that well, the data that came in this morning, but it's trying to hold still. As you can see from these smaller time frames, this 30 minute, 30 minute, 30 minute, and 15 minute, we're still trading within the volatility range. This is the news bar that came out uh, that came out at 830. And you can see here that NASDAQ still holding the range, the last 30 minute range. SP is still holding the range. That's just a peak of a low. Same is YM. And if we put this on the 30 minute chart right here, you can see that uh, Russell is still trading into that range. 
We've noticed that ever since the news came out, the volume has started to lower. It has started to subside a little bit. So that is a true indication that the market definitely is waiting for the New York trading session open to see what the suits here uh, are planning. The U.S. session is planning for today. So we're going to go back to the five minute charts. All right, so we have our game plan for the trading session today, and uh, we're all set. All we have to do, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show that the market is going to offer us today. All right, we're going to talk soon at the open. Hey, Tony, there's no setting up on GC in one hour. There's absolutely nothing. Not yet. <clears throat> we have to wait until this hour closes at 10 o'clock in order to see if we get a setup. Wait until the end of the life of the candle. So if, you, it's, if you're looking at a one hour candle, this candle starts ticking at nine o'clock and it closes at 10 o'clock so that's this could be a decision candle right here but it's not yet right now it's nothing you need to get it you need to have this closed and then you have the information until then no decision all right we got about a minute and a half left to the open Okay, market is just about to open. Let's see how uh, it's going to react to the data that came out about an hour ago. And we're open. Now a little bit more active.
they are attracted to that 35,000. Okay, we're going to start watching the Dow a little bit more here. Back into resistance into that 3520 just before the news came out. Not a lot of reaction in NASDAQ. SMP is starting to wake up as well. No rush, we need to see confirmation. We want all the indices to move in sync. What I do like is that the price action in the Dow is reacting above the double top high that was formed in the New York trading session yesterday. So that's good. We're not going to be discussing oil today. So oil is out as a trade. GC remains on watch until 10 o'clock. If not, we're going to toss. YM is trading into um, a little confluence resistance from the New York trading session, uh, 35020 zone. And also that area represents the overnight uh, resistance as well. Wyom is developing the, it's working on the five minute range at this point in time. We have uh, one minute left and we pretty much have some set parameters. The low uh, support in the Dow at this point in time for the first five minutes is 34,940. Nah, Daniel, um, wait for about 10 seconds or so. I like the 200 SMA here and the potential. I'm not a fan of this resistance here from this peak and this um, 20 SMA. I would much rather like it over 75. All right, why I'm pulling back. So they have set five minute ranges. Microsoft with a brand new high. Goldman Sachs about to take out yes, yesterday's high. IBM with a new high. JP Morgan Financial is very strong. Bank of America with a brand new high. So that means that S&P may start going. S&P is rich in financials. Disney is higher. So S&P may start moving as well. Apple strong.
Apple took out yesterday's high. Like I said before, Microsoft with a brand new high, Amazon with a new high, but it's pulling back. Tesla about to punch a brand new high. If Tesla takes out, nice. If Tesla takes out uh, 240 and 50 cents, it's gonna try to challenge the 260 and 266. Costco with a brand new high. Costco with a brand new high. Wow. Talking about stocks that you want to invest in, right? Intel with a brand new high, $40 and 15 cents today. YM area of interest is going to be 35040. We have 47 for the high from the uh from pre-market. NASDAQ becomes interesting. See, NASDAQ is conflicting. I like it over 75, 75, uh, 75 with the stop at 930. 930 is the stop. Let's do it. NASDAQ long. Uh, 15,975 and the stop. Make sure you position size for these trades. If you don't know how to position size, just wait until I talk about position sizing. And then and then trade. Because if you don't know how to position size, that's bad. You're gonna lose all your money. All right, so we have our first trade, um, which is gonna be yeah, Keith. I'm not kidding. It's the simple things. Trading is easy, position sizing needs to be there. <laughs> All right. Um, even seven, yeah, 75, 75. We're going to keep 75. Uh, YM become, uh, is becoming active. YM has a um, two minute buy that already triggered. Two minute buy. I don't have confidence in uh, the two minute buys in this flaky market. Let's see. Let's go back to this five minute. Okay. NASDAQ, no trigger yet. 73.5. Uh, Russell. What is up with Russell? Russell is rushing higher right now. Russell with a brand new high. I already did a five minute and up, two minute sandwich. Oh my God, Joe. <laughs> Why doesn't that surprise me? And I know someone else that may be in Russell. <laughs> Nobody's going to guess. <laughs> All right. Linda. Love you. Okay. I would love to see a sandwich here. So now our area, you guys can see where I placed my entry above this resistance high. Because here's the scoop. Um, this was the news bar. I don't trade news. This, to me, trading news is just like going to the casino. Okay. So to me, that's not trading. So I trade the reaction of the news and I watch and observe. And here's what I've noticed. So we have the news spike. Price came in. But when the price went up, it got rejected by this 10 EMA and rotated. You guys see how it rotated? All right. So we went green, green. And then we rotated down. We created a sell pattern. We retested the lows. 
And it seems that this is an obstacle here. Do you guys know why? Because look at this area. Do you guys notice something in this area? Oh gosh, I forgot that the Zoom changed the, the markers and the, ugh. <laughs> All right, let me see if I could do this. All right. I'm gonna try to do this as straight as I can, okay? So here we have resistance. This resistance becomes support before the news. News comes in, crushes through the support, but when the price comes back, the prior resistance, here it is, the prior resistance creates a rejection zone. You guys see it? That's why I want it to confirm that it's ready to tackle above this prior high. Okay? So that's why I want the price action to confirm. All right, I wanted to confirm and I, by confirming, I want my entry price to be a little bit higher. This is 72 for the high. Here we have 73 and a half, okay? I wanted to confirm higher because that is the only way that the price is showing me that is ready to take out this high. It's ready to chew up, digest this high and ready for higher, okay? So that's the reason why I chose the entry that I chose. The stop, I chose below this 200 SMA. Okay, so we have a nice trampoline here. Let's see if this is going to hold. It's still the five minute. Still very choppy. Remember what I said about the, uh, the Dow, that we have a two minute setting, two minute buy setting. This two minute buy, the rotation happened gorgeous, by the way triggered over 35,000, didn't go much higher than um, 35,011. So didn't go much higher, didn't extend higher and quickly came back down, erased the low. So if you would have taken this two minute buy, your entry would have been 35,03. Your stop below this low 970, you would have been out right now. That's why go to a higher time frame. look for the same type of strategies but on a higher time frame because of the fleecing that is going on right now. A lot of traders right now that are trading tick charts that are trading smaller time frames are getting their ass kicked. And that's because um that's because we have we have uh, a lot of fleecing in the market. We have even low volume. Even low low volume. By the way, I want to show you guys something really cool before we um, start watching some more stuff. Uh, by the way, the trade is still active, so keep it just a little bit longer. Obviously, if it tra starts trading below 930, we're going to be canceling it. But here's what I wanted to show you. Okay, you guys see this screen? This is Russell, okay? This is Russell right here. I have all my time frames in Russell. This is the one, the two, the five. 15, I don't have for market data here. I'm watching some other things here and some other patterns that are forming just in the New York trading session. Uh, and then of course I have uh, pre market data here. So um, I just wanted to show you, Russell, this is a one hour daily, weekly, and monthly. Just wanted to show you something really interesting. Look at the volume that we had here. Let me squish it a little bit. When was the last time we had this volume here? Take a look. So yesterday's volume, we had a similar volume here in June, right? You guys see it? It's right into the contract roll because we came into, here's the contract roll right here. Uh, so let's see when else we have that volume, the green volume, like we didn't, right? So this volume can tell us two things. Either all the longs, everybody that wanted to be long and everybody that wanted to, you know, pretty much make money and push it into a certain level is out, where it's getting ready to exit, okay? This could also mean this huge volume spike could also mean a change, a shift 
in the direction. Just like when you have a big down move and when you have a spike in the volume, that typically shows that you're getting ready for a rotation. Okay, so just wanted to share that with you guys. Now, let's take a look at NASDAQ here since we have this screen up. All right, so we have the first 15 minute, right? It's 946, we have the first 15 minute. You guys see it right here. This is yesterday's trading session. This is what I was telling you guys about. This is uh, this is the, the, the uh, resistance from yesterday's just New York trading session. These charts do not have pre-market data, just New York trading session, all right? And we do have support into the 920. So we can't say that, yes, this is gonna start falling from the face of earth at this moment in time. So it's still, and as long as the price action is still holding above the 20s, we're still gonna be looking bullish. If not, obviously we talked about it, we're gonna be looking at this four hour to see if we take it below this low, okay? So below nine, th nine, nine three zero. what is the low here? So the low, the exact low is 929.75. So we need to see it, that's why we need to hold that 30, okay? And if we, if we hold the 30, we're going up. But if we don't hold the 30 and we break below the 30, this is a topping tail. This is suggesting, and it's coming right into a pivot right here. This is this first area of resistance from the pivot? So what happens is that we're getting this information that sellers to control over this area. And we have some bulls that are right here that are still holding. So if the price gets below this, we're confirming a four hour sell, which means that the price action can come back to 845 or 850. Okay, so this is the possibility from the four hour. And if we get it, see, that's why we have that stop where we have it. Okay, and uh, if this area holds, because this is a huge minor support zone, so it could happen that it could break below. It could happen that it could break below ever so slightly and then push lower, getting all the shorts in and then shifting quickly back up. This is called the four cell institutions do this all the time, especially into the first uh, 30 minutes at the open. Okay. All right. So we're going back to watching paint dry. Okay. Thanks so much guys for taking care of the chat. I really appreciate you guys. Um, all right. For those of you that guys that have joined late, uh, we're looking at NASDAQ long over 975. We have a cluster here and then um, the stop should go below 930. We just tapped ever so slightly into the 930, okay? Uh, typically, if the price um, stays below the 930 level, then we will be canceling the trade. At this point, we, we just don't wanna make a lot of uh, movements in our account. Uh, there is a sandwich formation on the five minute and RTY. And if RTY is going to start moving higher, the market can start moving with it. It's kind of like that 2018 event again. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and go long here. Joe is going to hate me for this. <laughs> okay, he's adding here because if it takes out 1818, it takes out this huge, massive mess right before of the news. Yeah. And it's it's going to challenge the uh, 1920 again. And if it takes out the 1920, you got it. 1925, 1930, 1935. The, that's the trajectory. Really gorgeous consolidation. But the reason why I can't really call it or take it personally is because I'm having divergence in uh, Dow, S&P, and even in NASDAQ. So as long as these indices are not showing any kind of signs of revival, uh, I'm afraid that we may get a false buy and then a pullback in RTY. All right, 9.50 and the one hour GC is still not completed yet. So it's still transitioning lower. Support is not holding in it into the 1965. It's still following through lower. 
And that's not a good sign. The 30 minute has not held that well and we're getting that continuation lower below as well. Uh, it looks like it's on a mission to go to the 1960. I don't have a trade in it. I'm not short. I don't see an entry for us right now in it. So I'm still going to watch it on the one hour to see where that takes us. All right. So cancel NASDAQ at this point. No trigger. Cancel NASDAQ. Okay. And remember, at the end of the session, guys, you can ask as many questions as you want, as you wish. There's no silly question. If you feel like you don't really want to put it out there in the chat box, you could private message me here by selecting just hosts and panels. But I really encourage to select everyone because you see, if you ask the question, maybe there's the trader out there that wanted to ask that question, but forgot about it or, you know, just didn't feel like putting him uh, or her out there. So your question may help a lot of people in the room. Okay. We're seeing some bottoming tails. In uh, the Dow. S&P is testing the pre-market lows. NASDAQ is breaking below the 920 level. See, NASDAQ is not a bad idea to short here. Uh, Yeah, it across below that low here. Let's see. Like I said, it still has support at 20, has support at 910, has support at 900. So it's not that easy of follow through, not unless you're getting that heavy push and flow to the downside. Not committing on anything yet. We still have a pretty choppy market. We're noticing a little bit of weakness in uh, NASDAQ. This is very common for option expiration weeks to be a little bit more choppier. Joe, you shouldn't you know, worry about contracts. This con you should only be trading the December contract period in the indices. Your broker, yeah, your broker is automatically shifting you to the right contract. If you're trading on Thinkorswim or um, TradeStation, the broker is doing that for you. All right, all right, all right, all right. What do we have here, guys? We have a, a a bottoming tail. Look at the bottoming tail here. Remember what I told you guys earlier? And I'm also recording this session so you can review it uh, tonight or tomorrow or whenever you feel like it. Remember what I was telling you about the four cell action. Like I'm telling you, like I would like short this anytime, but intraday we still have a lot of support throughout these levels it's almost like from 10 points to 10 points the 10 ema support comes at 840 and then we have a confluence support around the 790 to 800 so that would be like a nice short here but let's see if we have like a weak pullback or the one minute one minute is setting up for a sandwich short so if it takes this low out the 900 of 904 let's see how um uh, yeah if it takes out the 904 then you have support at 900 then you have another support at 890 it's it's literally a hell mary whether you want to take it or not it's a Hail Mary. It's bearish. This is a bearish pattern under 905. This could be bearish. 
the stop, you would use the 10 EMA here into the 927 or 930 to give it a little bit of room in case you have some volatility spikes. I'm not taking it. It's not for me. Yeah, Joe, I, I would actually look at this cluster right here. If you're in the money, don't give anything back. I was actually looking at 1810. And here's why, because I was thinking like if we hold, uh, this could be like an ad over 1818 18 or 1818 18 or 1819. And this could be the stop at 1810. All right, take a look at what is happening right now. We're getting the bottoming tail action. We're going to shift this to the five minute. I got to tell you, the RTY is really holding. Eighteen eighteen is resistance in RTY, and then we have eighteen twenty. So if it takes out eighteen eighteen and a half, this could be an entry. I'm not sure about the rest of the indices. So this is the line in the sand that needs to be taken out. The eighteen eighteen point five. See, this whole entire area needs to be erased, and then we could have a stop, 1810. Yeah, let's do it. 1818 18 and a half. Entry, Russell, long, 1810 stop. We're going to trade this range. <sighs> and we're heading into the top of the hour. Uh, 10 o'clock is also reversal time. Daniel is liking YM here. I'm not loving it yet. I'm not loving it yet. All right, we have order filled and RTY. Okay, And the first hump that we need to get over is going to be the 1820, but uh, yeah, 18, 1821. So that's gonna represent a target, 1821. Eighteen twenty four. Eighteen thirty. Doji rotation here in Nasdaq as well. We're going to stick with Russell for now. If you're trading micros, the symbol is M2K.
Uh, 21 is hit and we're trading uh, close to 22. Target one achieved. It's the only thing that is moving higher. It hit the pivot and then your trading session at 21, like I said, and now it's creating a little bit of a chop into that zone. It should go to 30. I mean, it doesn't have any kind of uh, obstacle until 30. And we also have a rotation. No, not yet. It's it's not extended enough. It's not extended enough. We need to get it at least into the 25. 24, 25. We have target first target at 24. So when we get it into the 24, uh, first obstacle is 21. And I think it's digesting it quite well now. Uh, another 15 minute here that may be um, in the cards for uh, YM. Let's see if we have 15 minutes throughout setting up here. So uh, NASDAQ is still remains weak. Uh, Daniel, I think that YM may start moving, but it would need, see, this is a problem area from this pivot here. So 35,000 is a big cap for it. So I'm afraid that anything that we take below 35,000 is going to gyrate like crazy. All right. Keep it in mind, we are a few ticks away from 24. Take some profit when we get into that uh, closer to that 24. We're going to be looking to trail on monitoring the smaller time frames. And so far, we're on track with the trend on the one minute and the two minute with a new little support at 20. Twenty-four. Take some profits here into the 24. We have two targets that are achieved. The market remains horrible in the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ. No reaction. <clears throat> Joe, I think you're like <laughs> really huge up. <laughs> like huge up. Money rolling in. That's how we like it. The rest of the indices are uh, are toast, guys. We're not going to be trading anything else. I will give you some trails very soon. Let's not worry about trail stops right now. I'm on it. I'm going to tell you when to exit. Don't worry. Everybody is going to exit. I usually call the exit and then I exit. So. 
Okay. We have a high of 25, so right on the nose. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I want to show you guys something. Do you guys see any reason why we shouldn't get to 40 today? If these indices are going to start lifting just a little bit, I'm not, and I'm not saying that they should like skyrocket like they did yesterday, just a little bit of lift. If they're going to get a little bit of lift, this has no reason why not. It should go not only beyond our target of 30, but all the way into the 40s. I don't trade news, Tammy. To me, trading news is a lottery, and I'm not into the lottery. My lottery is technical analysis. I stay as far away as I can when the news comes up. I could care less. I don't care. I don't trade the news. Uh, skip, you want to go long, 59.34. May not be a bad idea, Skip. May not be a bad idea. Yeah, over this, yeah, you want to make sure that you take this out. I'm not, I'm not liking it. It's not something that I, that I would do. I would pick, for example, the Dow. Today, we're getting some weakness into, um, into NASDAQ. And it has a lot of resistance here. A lot, a lot of resistance. If it takes out that 35, maybe it's going to go to 45 to 48. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 35 to 45. Okay, so we're holding above the 20. I'm uh, looking here to see uh, where we should place the trail stop. Here's the deal. If the price right now is going to start printing 1824, and then we need 1825. So the first stage would be 1824. The price action is going to start moving higher and defend the confluence level of 21. So that means that we may have a trail stop at 1821. Definitely this trade is not going to be a losing trade. This trade is going to be a winner. But we're going to see if it's going to be a small win or a big win. All right, so 21 becomes confluence here. I think we should put a trail on 21. RTY trail 21. So lift your stops up to 1821. Drag them up to 1821. We also have this doji on the five minute with a low. Where's the low here? 1821.5, See, I'm telling you, uh, the Dow is reacting a whole lot better than the rest of the indices. Now, if we hold this low right here, if we hold that low, this is going to be great because we could still have a punch higher above 25. And if we break 25, then we should start our move towards the 30. Easy peasy. We're staying in. Uh, Donna, should I consider a pullback uh, at 1790? And 2K. 1790. That's, um, you want to short it at 1790 or not sure I understand the question? Or do you want to short it here with the target at 1790? You want to go long. 
but we're already long. But why 1790? You you want to wait for a pullback at 1790 to go long? What is 1790 for you? Oh, okay. Yeah. No. The trade is gone. So we're in RTY already. We have achieved two targets. You should not wait for um 1790. Just trade what's in front of you. So at this moment in time, there are no particular setups. So in an RTY, there's nothing in RTY. All right, let's check out these charts here. Uh, we have a little new high. So our trail stop is right in place. Love it, love it, love it. Look at the 10 EMA defend. Yay. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Loving it. All right, now keep in mind, guys. Two more points, and we're up 10 points in RTY. 10 points in RTY is huge. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Uncle Russell. Okay. Um, I don't want to choke it, but I think, and, and I know uh, we have another technical stop at 22, 1822. So don't just move it now. Just, just wait a little. To me, 1828.5 is going to be a big PL type of decision. Just putting it out there. So far, 24 seems to be developing minor support. We have a brand new high of 26.8. We have 27 right now for the high. No other formations in other indices, guys. And we're going to wrap it up quickly today. It's going to be a short work day. I can't believe how strong Russell is. Twenty eight point five. I am going to dump a lot at uh um uh twenty eight point eight uh twenty eight point five. I was gonna say that I want to see it at twenty eight point eight. Twenty eight point eight. Let's see if we get the twenty eight point eight here because twenty eight point eight is a level that if over we're gonna get to thirty. Uh, move your stop to 25, trail 25, RTY trail. 1825 for now. We have achieved all targets, by the way. But if those of you guys that are still in, um, that, like I said, the 1828.5 uh, is going to be a huge PNL level for me. We're getting a little bit of action in why I'm here, why I'm back into the 35,000.
let's see, 28.8. 28.8 is going to take us to 30. And you're probably going to see a blip to 30. Oops. Wasn't looking at these charts. All right. Why I'm moving nicely. Um, see this 30 minute here, uh, 4530 can bring more buyers into SMP. The stop would be down here, or if you're looking, yeah, down here, you don't have a choice. So we would need to take out the 30s. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, we're just in trending. We're almost done. My scope here is to uh, trail 10 points, to lock in those 10 points. One tick to 30, guys. 30 is a huge target for us. Remember, it's our last target, and my PNL target was 28.8. But final target is 1830. And then it could go higher. Here we got we have it. We have the 1830. Remember, still some room. We're in active trailing. Let's see how far we can get it. We have achieved all the targets. Take a look here. Vida, I'll explain that later. We have no reason why we shouldn't get. I'm uh I'm in the trade still, Vita, so I'm not I'm not gonna answer questions at this point. Twenty five is still the trail for the rest. I'm going to answer it, Vita. Promise. That's a really great question, by the way. All right. We're defending right now the 27. Uh, NASDAQ is still into a lot of trouble here. Uh, S&P, we need to see it over 30. But I'm not going to take it. I'm done. I'm done, 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 done. Uh, we're defending the one minute trend, power trend here. Let's go back here to the five. See this, this is kind of like topping here. Our trail is still 25. Oh, what a gorgeous, what a gorgeous day. You cannot make this thing up. This is our last target 30. But it could still go to 40, but it's not going to go without a pullback. And it's 1020. So yeah, we're expecting a pullback. 945 came in full force here. 10 o'clock created the reversal. And now this is 1030. <laughs> Shoot. All right, everything is kind of like pulling back. RTY is still defending that 25. 25 is going to be our last trail. And 25 comes from the two minute, two minute 10 EMA. Do you guys see it? Pull back. 
higher. This is our 25. All right, now here's the scoop. We get it over this high, 27.8. We're going back to 30. And 25 is still holding. If not, we're going to be taken out. But still, we made a lot of money. We have all targets hit. And last lot is 25 trail. Autopilot, that's what we like. Guys, do you think trading is stressful? <laughs> no, it's not. It's actually fun. All right, we're back. We're back over 10 points up. <laughs> All right, 28.8. NASDAQ is just very ugly today. Uh, we're very close to making a new high. Just, just so you know. How do you like the trailing system, guys? Does that help you? Managing the, uh, having somebody to manage your trade. I know, right? I wish I had the same type of work done for me when I first started trading. All right, cool. Daniel, you took it at 42. Okay, we have a brand new high in RTY. Yeah, your stop needs to be all the way here, Danielle, 900. Uh, look for 30-minute pop-ups. You need to get it over uh, over 70 again. See, it's, it's that 72 area again. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're loving it, we're loving it, we're loving it. Trading is... Fun. Oh my gosh. Thank you for the compliment. It's much easier to trade with some great trader as you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. We're going to lock in 10 points right now. 1820, uh, 1828.5. 1828.5. RTY. Lock that baby in. Lock, not locks, but anyway, you get it. 18, 28.5, that is our trail stop. So we lock in 10 points and whatever is above now, pure bonus, ka-ching, ka-ching. 18, 28.5. This is our stop right here. Don't let it go below that. We give it permission for higher. The next resistance is 1835 to 1837. And we're in trail mode. That's why you need to have multiple targets. So you know what kind of decision to take at each and every single target. Whether to keep it, scale some out, or keep the whole thing. We have a new high, 31.7. Wallace, can I help you with that? So you got in at 31. Good job, Wallace. Let me give you a trail stop. Uh, 9.50. 9.50, your trail stop. Lease, it's it's kind of like um, left the building right now, choppy. Like it wasn't a trade that I would ever get in because it lacked the setup and it was just a grind. So for those that hopped in, hopped in and just got lucky <laughs> because it's not. So that's my thoughts on NASDAQ now. It's trading into resistance here. Uh, we have the same resistance uh, into that 72 that we spoke about this morning, and it needs to take out this 72 before it launches to 16,000. Of course, 
If you're in, stay in. If you're not in, just stay in Russell. That's it. The uh, second trade that I, oh, you're in? Okay, so use that 50 trail stop. Use that 50 trail stop. Chris, you're in ES. Let me know if you need a trail stop in ES. I'm seeing a nice trail into 30, just about 31. You're into resistance right now. So this is a huge target that you, that S&P just took out. So it's on its way to this 41 spike, new spike. New trails in three minutes. Actually, two, two, two and a half minutes. Anybody in uh in the Dowski? Anybody in the Dowski? If you guys are in the Dowski, 35,011. Skip, you're in NASDAQ, 985. Don't get complacent. Just get ready to trail. We don't know what kind of market we, we have right now. So it's kind of, we already had a nice, nice run. Great job, please. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, We're going to be trailing 1830, guys. Russell, 1830, trail, RTY trail. Done and we're done. We're out. Congratulations, everybody. Congrats, congrats, congrats. Okay. Here's a pullback. Okay. Okay. Today's session is going to come with a side of education. <laughs> How's that? We have some we have some interesting questions in here. And I want to address them because they're so important. <laughs> Vita, <laughs> your question is going to make today's so. Uh, today's topic because it's such an important um such an important uh, question okay all right let me just take all these alerts out okay okay before i continue oh, okay before i continue just want to show you something else we're done with russell it could go to the moon right now we don't care we made our money in uh and trading is not about capturing the very bottom or the very uh, top. It's about good management. All right. So we're going to shift these to the five minute in case we have some other opportunities here. It's 1030 and we're done. This is uh, what how we usually trade a day like today in the trading room and we would be done. Wouldn't it be nice? to know how to trade and actually be done at 1030 in an hour. This is trading the power hour. Obviously we had a lot of help from the market. Oh my gosh, Joe, you made a mistake and it didn't take you out. <laughs> Don't let it go below 30, like seriously. NASDAQ is stinky and it may stink up the place here. Uh, it's See, it, it's getting rejected. 
and it makes lower pivots. So it had the high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. This is not a good sign. Remember what I was telling you guys about the four hour in NASDAQ, right? That we can, please watch the video, right? Four sell and then up, all right? And we have the four sell and up and pretty much everything uh, except for Russell. And then we have the 15 minute that is just getting weaker. Now that four hour can become a short if we break below this 900 and your stop, instead of having the stop over here from the four hour, you could actually use the latest five minute pivot. That's just an idea. Um, Chris, amazing. Oh my gosh, what a great exit, Chris. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Great job, everybody. I love to see everybody into the green. This is what it's all about, helping each other out and, you know, making money because it's not easy making money in the market, but with the right system, you can make money in the market and we can have a lot of fun along the way. Okay, it's all about the big wins, the small wins, the break-evens and those very small losses. As traders, we need to keep that in mind. And always don't trade on hope. Just always trade with confidence and accountability, managing your risk, managing your trade all the time. Even though we saw that, for example, Russell had the potential to run into the um, 35, 37, 40 area, I'm not complacent. When I see that we have indices that are literally not cooperating, they're rotating, I keep it on. That's why I keep this chart up at all times and I share it in the room because you guys need to see what's going on as well throughout the indices. Because if there is one index, for example, that has difficulty making highs that has difficulty lifting then that may create problems for the rest of the indices obviously today is an example russell is an example of a trade on its own this is it's it's literally like the second day wonder because we had a one day wonder yesterday and everything and this is today's one day wonder in russell because russell had the force to push further higher without the rest of the market showing its direction. And actually, Russell, at the little index, Russell 2000 is capable of lifting the market higher. If Russell today, and I'm seeing a repeat of what we had in 2018. Those of you guys that were around and trading in 2018, do you guys remember? And if there was, for example, a move that was happening into the market, uh, for example, if Russell was lower, um, everything was lower. The Qs, NASDAQ, the S&P, SPIs, the Dow, diamonds were lower. It was carrying the market with it. If Russell was rotating up, it, the market would move up. The same thing happened in, uh, I think it was in 2006, 2000. No, it was in 2016 uh, and 2017 with the oil. If oil was higher, the market would, would go higher. If oil was lower, the market would go lower. Okay. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the context in this market right now. We're done. And like I said, I'm going to do a little lecture now because we have uh, some very good questions in here. And I think education is more important than actually uh, pushing the buttons because I can teach you how to make money into the market. So you the, the biggest takeaway is learning how it's done, okay? And not making money on that day. Obviously, that's the big bonus, right? Okay, so first of all, let's take a quick look at the markets and see where we're at. And for that, I'm gonna go to the one hour charts because you guys are gonna see where we're at on a little bit of, this is not a macro level, but but this is you know somewhat of a bigger time frame. So from this activity here, so I want you guys to do a quick comparison, okay? Where is the, where is Russell trading in comparison to <clears throat> the top of the range from the overnight? Higher, extended, beautiful, right? Okay, now where is, and keep this in mind, 
where is the Dow in comparison to the top of the range? Just right there into the top of the range is, has not extended that much, but it's into the top of the range. We have the top of the range uh, here at 35.047 when we had the big numbers come out at 8.30. So we need to take this out 35.050 in order to start extending higher. And the extension could take the price to 100 and 150, okay? So this is where we're at. Any kind of blast over 35,050 is gonna take the price into 100 and 150. Now, take a look at S&P. Not much different than the Dow, but definitely this one has relative strength. Take a look at the percentage gain. It's almost 29 points off, 1.6% to the upside. While these indices cannot lift even half a percent up. So you can see here 0 0.39, 0 0.45. This is into the top of the range. Very similar with the Dow, right? So we have the top of the range here into the 35 huge resistance. That's why we saw the pullback because we have confluence resistance, right? We have resistance in the Dow. We have resistance in S&P. So that's the reason why it's reacting to this resistance a lot more sensitive because it's not as strong as Russell, Russell is just charging higher. Now, if we break over this resistance high, we should be able to tackle the prior high, the 45, 41.25, which, which was created by the new spike and then continue higher into the 45.50, it's actually 56. So where's NASDAQ in this whole equation? Well, if you have to grind higher, in the overnight, still above the 10 EMA. And then at the open, it started to pull back to the 900 zone. 900 zone is a minor support zone from yesterday's trading session. So it's not as bearish as it seems. That's why I was mentioning this morning that the four hour looks like a short. And if the rest of the indices would indicate that they would perform this four hour sell, then I would go ahead and short NASDAQ because it's weaker. You want to short something that is weak. You don't want to short strength. So for example, Russell, you don't want to short Russell because Russell is super strong. Why would you short it? Why would you get in the way of the institutional power push? So NASDAQ, because it's weaker, I, we have identified the weakness just in case we needed to short. Okay, just in case we needed to short. Just imagine all of the traders today that were short and they got run over by the institutional snowball, right? All right, and this is how you evaluate the markets. And then going back to the five minute, we noticed something that is significant. We have a high, right? I'm not gonna consider this spike high, but this high right here. And then we have double top, lower high. We're noticing that we also got rejection from these prior highs right here, okay? So basically, this is going to be uh, literally, it, it's not to the weak list, but it's not to the bullish list either. Okay, so this one is into the chop chop. So can it lift higher? And I think one of the biggest things is to get it over the 1975. Whenever you see this kind of chop, it's always time to zoom out. OK, just like when you're going to a museum to look at a painting, you're not getting up close a foot to the painting, right? A foot closer to the painting, because other than that, you will watch what? You will just see the brush strokes. You will not see identify anything else. You will not see what's going on in the painting. You will not see whether it's a landscape or a portrait or an abstract painting, because all you see is the brush stroke. You only see one little color, right? But when you sit back, Right when you stand back and when you look, then you see the whole picture. The same thing with uh, with Nasdaq and with candles. Here you see a lot of noise, but when I put this, for example, um, time frame on a thirty minute, everything becomes clear. And obviously, right now you could see a setup. So if the price action trades above sixty four, right? So this would be um, this would be. Okay, 64, 64 would be the entry. So over 64, your stop is going to go still 900 because you don't have a choice because of the chop. And then, uh, so you're going to put your stop, let's say below 900, and this is the train of thought. And with this, I'm going to answer 
uh, Seva's question, right? So this would be your entry. This is your stop. This is your R, okay? The risk that you're applying, the difference between 64 and 900, right? So you're applying a 64, uh, you're applying a 64 point risk, okay? So if you're using, for example, a $500 risk per trade, which is very common with traders, okay? And you have a 64 point risk, you cannot take this trade with a full size contract, but yet you could take it with four micros by position sizing. See how many contracts you could fit in here, okay? Using 1%, for example, if you have a $50,000 account, okay? Does that make sense? Now, in order for you to evaluate this trade, you want to make sure that the price action has room at least one R, right? At least one R or two R's in order to make it a good trade, right? And I'm going to put these on the five minute as well. All right, here we go. So you go as far as where you see the setup. There was no setup on the five. There was no setup on the two, no setup on the one, no setup on the 15, but there's the setup here on the 30 minute. Oops, sorry. Uh, the setup here on the 30 minute. So now that we, you have, so you see like these trades, these setups are happening way, 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 way in advance. So you have time to think your strategy, to think where your targets are. It's not impulse trading like click, 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 and then loss. No, it should be click, click, click profit, okay? So basically this is your R, and this is gonna be your target. Your first target is gonna be 1600 because 1600 is the key psychological level. Then you have the 1620, which is also key psychological level, happens to be a fulcrum and within a, with the tons of institutional power. And then you're going to the 1650, all right? And then beyond, you're gonna look for other targets above that, okay? And in order to do that, you squish the charts and you don't see any information here, you, you go on the daily chart and you try to find out what resistance areas you have on the daily, right? And you can see here, these are the parameters for our trade, but we have an ultimate high of 16,062, pivot high. And that's from July. So that's gonna be your ultimate target. So now you're gonna go back to your 30 minute chart where you have your trade set up and say, hey, is it worth it for me to take this trade if my uh, if my target is going to be into the 1670? Well, you're risking uh, you're risking <laughs> excuse me 60 points. So from 60 uh, from 64 uh, from 15,000 what is it 15,964 um, all the way to uh, let's say 16,070, you have 106 points. So you're going to make <coughs> one and a half R and it may even go beyond that. Okay. It may even go beyond that. <coughs> Does that help? And now we're going to talk about targets because like I said, the first target is going to be here. Let me just get my cursor because for each trade, you're going to have a series of targets. Okay. Okay. So for each trade, you're going to have a series of targets. Targets are formed by confluence areas, resistance areas, indicators that you have, uh, extensions, whatever you're using. Okay. Uh, for that particular case, we're not discussing now how to calculate targets, uh, because that would take probably two hours. So, what we're going to be doing is establishing target one, which is the key psychological level of 16,000. Target number two is going to be the 1620, which is still an institutional factor. Uh, target number three is going to be the 16,050, which is also the prior high here and comes confluence with an institutional uh, technical level. Uh, and we have another one into the 70. And if over 70, we have further targets. Why do we need to establish further targets. And why do we need to establish at least three to four or five targets? Because if you're getting a institutional power push, you're gonna have to take some decisions. And these 
uh, targets are going to help you achieve and uh, and these uh, are going to help you with taking those decisions. For example, if this candle is going to go like all green, let's see if I have that drawing thing here. I don't have it anymore. Okay, so I'm just going to use this. So for example, this target right here, let's say it triggered, right? And it looks like this. It takes out the prior high. Uh, it's trading in uh, over 64. You're in the game. If you're getting a power surge higher into the 16,000, okay, then you have two options here. Either you take half off, even if you're not yet 1R, just because you're into resistance, you take, uh, you take, uh, uh, you take half off. And that, like I said, I like to do that a lot because that eases my position. I trade with a lot of size, so that is going to help me uh, take better decisions as I'm approaching the next targets, okay? So what happens here at target one, you have to watch price action. There is no autopilot that is going to create this strategy for you. It's you, your eyes, and your computer. If the price crushes, through the resistance, and if you see that the volume is increasing, if you see that the power push is moving really fast towards that 16,000, you have the option to one, take half off, or if you see that big rush of price uh, slicing through the 16,000 like butter, then stay all in. And once the price trades closer to 1620, you raise your trail stop all the way here. That's the purpose of having multiple targets. Now for each position, so let's say you're trading with only one contract, okay? Whether micro or full size, it doesn't really matter. You treat it the same. So when you hit your target one at 16,000, right? Again, watch the price action. If the price action is fast and it crashes, it, it slashes through that 16,000, stay in. If it's slow and it had a really hard time getting to 16,000, take half out and then put your stop and break even. That's how you trail. Into the second target, you do the same. As the price goes into the second target, watch it. That's why you're a day trader. That's why you're sitting in front of the computer all day, right? Not all day, but an hour. But anyways, uh, or two hours like I do. So if the price action is hitting target two with velocity, it means like boom, and it crushes that second target, stay in. You don't have a reason to get out, okay? And as price continues, you can, leave, you can actually trail your uh, stop to that specific area, to your target two. Once at target three, you trail target two and so on. Siva, that's the reason why you need to have multiple targets because they're going to help you with your decision process, how you need to react when the price action is at that point. And in the back of your mind, you're always going to um, you know, ask yourself, how's the price moving? how, what my reaction is going to be. So having a plan, a preset plan for every single aspect of your trading is going to help you a lot in your trading, okay? It's gonna help you a lot in your trading. It's gonna help you manage the trade. It's gonna make you a more disciplined trader. It's going to make you uh, trail. So. What I'm trying to say is that you're not going to be, you know, hail marrying trades through trades. You're just going to have diligent decisions. Okay, so it hit target one. So at target one, I'm looking, how did the price hit target one? Did it hit it on velocity? Did it crush through target one or did it have a hard time? Because if it's having a hard time, I'm getting out. Okay, so I'm it's not that I'm getting out, but I'm taking partial profits on target one. And then I'm putting my stop. If I have a good enough extension, then I'm putting my, uh, then I'm putting my stop in, uh, uh, at, uh, uh, close to the entry. So I have a break even trade, uh, from now. So you're locking in half the size into target one. And then the rest of the position you're locking in at break even. So you don't lose. So you, for, from now on, you're playing with the house money. OK, and then another thing is break even, uh, having break even in trades is great, but don't lock it in too soon. 
Because for example, now NASDAQ, NASDAQ trigger above this high, right? And it's extending higher. So now it's really way too early to put it, put your stop or break even. So make sure that you have these decisions that are going to help you. Okay. So basically we have the 16,000, right? We have the 16,000. Uh, Chris, this is what we have been talking about for the last 10 minutes. Targets in NASDAQ. Literally, this is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. So when you see it in, <laughs> into the 16,000, <laughs> okay, when you see it into the 16,000, then you reduce your stop and break even. Does that make sense, everybody? So that's how you manage trade. And that's how you have your trade on autopilot because if you, and that's the most important thing, managing the trade. R risk management and money management are two of the most important things in trading because you could have the crappiest trading system that only delivers 30 to 40 percent win rate, you're still going to come out ahead if you know position sizing and you know risk management. Th these are the only most important things. And other than that, you are going to literally rock. Literally rock. Okay. Oh, thanks, James. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I teach everything in my course. Like James said, James uh, took the course. Yeah. So uh, I can teach you everything. So trading should be pain-free, should be fun, should be stress-free. I don't think we had one moment of stress yesterday. I don't think we had a moment of stress today. I don't think we've ever had a moment of stress since I initiated the trading room or since I created Trade Out Loud in the stock, in the, the stock swing program. Okay. All right, so I'm going to scroll up and answer some other questions. Uh, I know there were a lot of questions about the dotted lines. These are simple pivot points from, uh, from um, uh, simple pivot points. You could have it on all the platforms uh, incorporated. They're automatically um, traced for you. Uh, they start tracing. Let me just go to the four hour here. Okay, so as you guys could see, they start tracing at six o'clock. This is the candle that closed uh, closed right here. So let me just, let me just put it because it's confusing. Let me put it on the one hour. Okay, so you guys can uh, see it. All right, so here it is. The market opens at 6 p.m. Eastern and this is how they're generated. Pivot points are generated uh, automatically on any platform and they are calculated based upon the prior session, high, low, close, and open. There is an equation that provides that information. And uh, these levels are automatically traced. These levels are very important for trading as they represent uh, a lot of, they, they carry a lot of characteristics and they carry a lot of substance to trading. So for example, as you can see here, I have everything color coded in my uh, trading uh, so uh, it becomes easier. The support areas are with red. Uh, and these are uh, support level one, support level two, support level three. I only use three uh, uh, bearish and three bullish. This is uh, resistance number one, resistance two, and resistance three. And you have a yellow dotted line, which is your Switzerland is your neutral ground. Uh, typically, when the price is trading a little bit above, the medium pivot point, it becomes a little bit more bullish. And as it approaches the first area of resistance, it shows that it's a little bit into the um, pullback territory. So we could start pulling back a little bit. But other than that, you know, I teach it in my course, how to trade, uh, how to trade with uh, pivot points and uh, how pivot points can help you. And again, that's, another two hours <laughs> that I can uh, spend with you guys if you decide to join our class ever. Um, we teach how to trade with these and the significance. And of course, I use uh, these moving averages in the course. We teach you how to trade and how to determine trends, active trends, how to trail and how to trade actually with these moving averages that are extremely helpful. And I use the 10 exponential moving average. I use the 20 simple moving average. I use the 50 simple moving average. 
And it's the 200 simple moving average that you could see it all down here. So these are uh, the moving averages and basically the indicators that I use. And of course, on my other screen, on my home chart, on my home screen that I'm gonna display right now, I use volume on all of these charts. I don't use volume on the um, uh, charts that I'm sharing with you guys um, in the trading room, but this is another screen that I trade off. So for example, when I get in a trade, I look at this screen. I don't even look at my PNL or my uh, active trader. This is where my eyes are because um, look, everybody's <laughs> I'm human as well. And I'm really drawn to PNL trading and which is not great. Um, but what can I say? I love my money. So, uh, but anyways, um, as you can see here, I have the volume. I don't have any other indicator other than price action, formations, uh, and volume. That's it. That's all I have. It's very easy peasy, simple trading, dumbed down trading strategies that work and have worked for me for a really long time. I have phenomenal performance on day trading, you guys saw it yesterday, you guys saw it today. I have even more amazing performance in my swing stock swing trader because that's long, tra long term for my investing as well. Uh, so if you know a system, you know how to apply it in uh, all the areas. So this is to answer the question about the indicators that I use. And now I'm going to go to some other um, questions. Hey, Doji Man, mention how you teach us how to read chart pattern action. Yes. Uh, so one of the things that I, that I think it's so important is to pay attention to price action. Price action is king. Okay. No matter what everybody says or I don't care what everybody says or, uh, you know, what indicators they pop up uh, with or whatever systems they come up with, because there's like literally just only one system. It's price action. So everything kind of like goes down to price action. Uh, by the way, RTY, RTY here into the 200 SMA, this is like literally the line in the sand. Everybody that is an RTY or you guys are still thinking that you still should stay in, you should have a trail at 30, okay? Because you have the pivot at 30 right here, which was our last target. Uh, 30, I remember what I said, 35 to 37, this is that right here, 35 to 37 inch into the 200 SMA. So I do the top-down approach into trading and I showed you guys in the pre-market game plan. And I usually start with the highest time frame and I go zoom in to the closest time frame as the one minute and two minute. The, today was not a day to trade smaller time frames. The one minute or the two minute was way too fleecy and flaky. So we focus more on the five. But typically in the first uh, two to five minutes, I like to focus on the one minute chart. And that uh, that can deliver some really quick, really quick results. OK, really, really quick trades. All right, so um, we teach in our course, maybe we're gonna talk more about it tomorrow, uh, but in our course, what we do is what we start with is with candlestick language and the psychology behind price action. And I think it's so important because every single candle here uh, shows us a particular action into the market. Whether you see a bottomy tail candle, which is like this one, this shows us that the price action that, so this shows us that bears once dominated this two minute domain. And now we see that the bears are being swept up by bulls because we see here the close, the open, and we're having the first ticks of this, uh, of this bar uh, taken by, uh, taken by the bulls here. So we have segments that show us how to read the top, the bottoms, the bodies, that show us what can happen within the next two minutes, one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes with laser sharp precision. And I mean 90% precision, 90%. So if I see a particular candle, for example, I know for sure what can happen in the market. So that is uh, that is just super cool. Um, so, uh, we teach traders uh, how to day trade. So we're going to talk more about this tomorrow. If you guys allow me to talk a little bit about the course, we can talk about tomorrow. I truly want to focus more about on the market today. 
Uh, but in the course, we teach you not only the best trading strategies that you could ever have. They're not, but they're 10 trading strategies. And all in all, it boils down to about two to three strategies that you're going to use on a day-to-day -day level on a day-to-day -day basis. And the rest of the time, you have some unique opportunities. And then we also teach you for very busy traders how to trade, uh, for example, the overnight market. For those of you, or for those of you that are busy at work, uh, and have uh, don't have time, for example, to look throughout the day and only, you know, get back from work, uh, let's say, at seven or eight o'clock at night, and you want to evaluate the market, we teach you overnight trading with that as well. We also have a course for swing trading, um, uh, for swing trading, specifically for swing trading um, uh, futures as well. Um, where you can learn how to swing trade commodities, uh, you know, like sugar and cocoa that are uh, interlinked with seasonality, technicals, and so on and so forth. So, all right. Okay, cool. So does that make sense, guys? Uh, do I always use the same scans? I don't scan anything, Lori. Yeah, I don't scan for anything. I just have this chart right here. I, I have this panel. Uh, I have my four indices, gold and oil, and I look for relative strength weakness. I look for pattern, either continuation or rejection, and I take my decisions from that. Okay, DJ Aurora. Uh, now RTA shows in two minute and five minute to daily how to summarize and take that decision. Ah, oh, I have to take you through the whole course in order to do that. <laughs> like it'll take me five days <laughs> to take you to that, uh, to, to answer that question. But what I, what I could tell you right now in a sentence that in a sentence is that you need to use, um, multi time frame. Uh, analysis in order to narrow your decision on the two minute or the five minute or on the time frame that is literally showing you that the trade uh, that the trade is uh, forming because sometimes, for example, in NASDAQ, you guys saw that I was looking on the five minute. I didn't see anything, just a bunch of chop. But as soon as I uh, as soon as I zoomed out and I uh, and I looked at it on the thirty minute, I saw potential for the upside here. Okay, so uh, like I said, you have to navigate to the time frame that is giving you providing you information on the setup. So don't be afraid to zoom out. So when in doubt, zoom out. So if you don't see the pattern on the one minute, move to the two, and if you don't see the pattern on the two, then move to the five. But you know you have to learn what to look for. Okay. And that is the first thing that you need to do. So higher time frames are dominating a smaller time frames, and higher time frames are always dictating what the smaller time frames are going to be doing. Okay. Ah, uh, Vita. A lot of educators say keep the chart simple, but when you see uh but when you see charts which are prepared for seminars it's like nasa charts i agree they all have all the lines all the bells and whistles and you're missing one point what is price action saying <laughs> i know i know i know all the lines all the trend lines all those squiggly wiggly look when when you're day trading, you don't have time for squiggly wiggly trend lines, you know, like little fibs, doing this, doing that. No, it's very simple. Keep it simple. Keep it price action. Keep it candlesticks is all you need. You're doing great, Vita. You're fantastic. Eric. Hello, you're enjoying uh, the three-day open house. I'm so happy, Eric. Will there be a promotion after tomorrow, final day? Well, maybe stick around and you'll see. <laughs> uh, the, price of, uh, the price of the trading room is not going to change, but we're going to have a special for the class. And it's going to be a two-day special. It's going to be like a, a early Black Friday. We never do Black Friday. We never do any specials because here's the here's why. I don't believe 
that when you're, uh, you know, when you're teaching somebody something, you can teach it at a discount. You know what I mean? Like you're teaching, you're putting your heart and soul into that person's success. I'm not coming here at a 50% discount and saying, oh, we're today we're only going to do a 50% of the charts. I'm going to give you 50% of the strategies today. <laughs> okay. Um, oh my gosh. Thank you guys. You really like this uh, live um, open house. Uh, and tr tr learning how to trade is not that hard. Uh, I developed this course. Look, here's the thing. Honest moment right here. I started day trading stocks. I love day trading stocks. And I still do love trading stocks. Love, but I don't day trade as often. Maybe I trade stocks once in a while, although I love it. For tax purposes, my account has suggested that I shift to futures. OK, so that's the reason why I kind of shifted towards futures. So I started trading futures. First of all, I was really bummed because I was trading stocks. And you see this panel right here? It was very different here. I would have the diamonds. I would have it like this uh, here. I would have the spy here. I would have the cues here. I would have um, I W M. OK. And I would have these, uh, and I would have these uh, charts exactly like this on the five minute, okay? On my other screen, now I'm gonna share the screen right now, another screen for you guys, okay? So this screen right here, okay? Do you guys see where my cursor is? Just give me a one or a yes or a Y or something. Just wanna make sure that you guys can see it. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, thanks. Uh, so these are, uh, this is my watch list, okay? I don't have it like in a list per se, and I don't have it written down on paper because if you have it written down on paper, you're missing literally setups, right? Uh, now, because I'm swing trading, these charts are all daily charts, okay? Because that's where my swing trades are coming from. I take decisions on daily charts, weekly charts, monthly charts. This is my zip code. So when I was day trading, all these charts would be on a five minute time frame. I had another screen with the same type of stocks that would be on a 15 minute screen. I would keep the five minute screen up until about 10.15 to 10.30. <clears throat> and after 10.30, I would move to the 15 minute charts. Okay. So that's how I would do a day trading. I would make a list and every single day I would scan. I use the scanner. I still use the scanner. I use several scanners. Okay. So I use the scanner every single day to see what's in play that day. I paid attention to earnings, right? And again, we had earnings from, let's put it right here. Let's say from Target. All right. Here's Target. Okay, by the way, Target looks explosive over 130, 130. I traded the same way. I traded the same way. And actually, um, uh, there's not much difference between swing trading and futures trading other than uh, for, uh, 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 I'm sorry, from day trading to um, day trading stuff to day trading futures. The only thing is that you're going to have just very small nuances and differences. For example, what I teach when um, I teach the uh, stock trading course. Uh, I teach about gaps where we don't have to talk about gaps in the futures markets. You don't have gaps. I mean, you have gaps that are artificial based on the price difference between, let's say, uh, uh, the rollover. OK, but you don't have gaps as, you know, from earnings and stuff like that. Um, for example, in futures, what I teach that I don't teach in the day trading uh, um, stock course, for example, I don't teach um, the rollovers, contract expiration, contract sizes, right? Because you don't need these types of things. Season, seasonality, yes, you need it in both, but there are some nuances that you don't need. So my accountant said, hey, you know what? You could actually keep more of your money if you shift to 
future the fu into futures i wasn't a big fan of futures in fact i don't even know if i put like two or three trades in the futures market until then because i was addicted to the stock market right i would look at the futures market overnight but i can't say that i would put trades on okay so my account said hey switch your move from stocks to futures but here's the thing and i went like okay so when you trade stocks for example if you want to trade semiconductors or you want to trade apple you want to trade tesla you want to trade microsoft you want to trade nvidia for example i gave you just a few names that are a component of nasdaq right which are components of the queues first off you analyze the queues right and you want to analyze the queues and say hey does it have relative weakness or does it have relative strength in comparison to the spies in comparison to the dow in comparison to the iwn which of these ETFs is stronger and which of the ETFs is weaker, okay? So once I have this leaderboard, let's say the queues are stronger, okay? Then I would look under the queues to see which stock is dominating that domain and which sector is dominating the domain. Is it the tech sector, the semiconductor sector? If it's the tech sector, for example, I'm looking for Apple, NVIDIA, Google, whatever. OK, so if I find a stock, for example, like Apple or if I find a stock like, uh, let's say, Microsoft or let's put let's put Microsoft. OK, let's put Microsoft. And if Microsoft is much stronger structurally wise than the queues, then I would take a trade in Microsoft and Microsoft would be my top watch, for example, on a five minute. And this is what I would watch. Now, I want to show you something. Take a look at Microsoft because a lot of uh, futures traders ignore what's happening in the stock market, okay? And many, many years ago, I started talking about this and I started talking about the futures market and I was literally the pioneer in the market of the futures market uh, in the landscape of the fu futures market. I had big box companies that were copying my seminars. And we're copying all my information, my ebooks and everything. That's why I only have one ebook right now, because they were copying everything that I had. They would just change the wording, even the chart. They would keep the same symbol and everything, but they would do it on uh, on their own. OK, so from that point on, I'm like, I'm not offering anything for free anymore. OK, so look at this, guys. This is Microsoft. High, lower, high, lower, high. Now I'm going to put here back the cues. OK. All right, so I'm going to shrink it up and I see high, lower, high, lower, high. Okay, so now I'm going to put here NASDAQ. Okay, NASDAQ, high, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high. Right, this this is a divergent high right here because it's trying to change the trend a little bit or it's trying to fake out. It's still into a resistance area. But anyway, so you see that there was not much different and I went like, huh, maybe that's a good thing, right? Maybe that's a good thing that I can only trade the indices because when you're a stock trader, you analyze the indices on a day-to-day -day basis and then you go on to analyzing the sectors. Then you go on to analyzing the strength and weakness in stocks within the sector. So I go like, yeah, it should be easier than this, right? Uh, so we're going to put this back down. All right. So, all right. So we're back to futures, okay? Back to futures. So basically, when uh, when I made the shift, I was like, yeah, maybe that's a thing. And it was no turning back. And I had, you know, just a few friends that were trading friends, trading buddies, and I would just share. And I, you know, I was very honest and told them, hey, you know what? I am just switching. I'm just going futures. I want to see how it goes. And that was not even that long ago. It was like almost like 10 years ago. It was, yeah, it, it was exactly 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, I decided to go like futures, full futures and see how, and I, and I made it work because it's, I come with extensive background in the stock market. I'm an investor 
I'm a swing trader and I'm a day trader. Never had a losing year since I started training on my own, ever. Never had a losing year with track performance. We track, I track my performance. I had my performance audited for about three to four years in a row. I had a program that was running with Benzinga. Do you guys know Benzinga, right? Okay, so they were auditing. They had an external audit for my trades and I was in their program. All right, so, um, and I was offering the stock swing trader through them. And then they, you know, kind of like, I think it ran for a few years and then they decided like, no, we shouldn't have any kind of programs. And they, they rethought everything out. But anyways, so uh, bottom line is that trading, once you learn a system, it opens the door to everything else. So once you learn how to trade futures, you base the, the basic know-how, you automatically know how to trade stocks. You automatically know how to trade cryptos. You automatically trade better as an options trader. So you're going to take much better trading decisions when you have and when you know, um, you know, how to trade. It all boils down to, and here's the thing. A lot of traders say, hey, I'm going to open an account and, you know, see how it goes. And they're putting 5,000 to the line, 10,000 to the line, 20,000 to the line, and they're blowing up their accounts. Now I'm going to share something with you guys. We had an open house, I think it was in August. And we had one individual in the room. It was not, obviously, was not one of our traders. But this individual said that that was very happy that I remember we had a trade in the Dow. And she took the trade in the Dow. We made like a hundred something points in that trade. And she said, thank God that trade worked for me. Because if that trade would have, uh, if that trade would have stopped, I would have blown up three quarters of my account. And I'm like, oh my God, okay? Oh my God, that person didn't know how to position size. Her risk was 75%. So in one trade, can you imagine 75% in a trade? And if you lose on that trade, your account is done, right? Right? So a lot of traders, and be very careful, because I don't know where you guys are at, but you should not risk more than 1% on your trade and position size, because this is key. And tomorrow, we're going to tap a little bit more. Like I said, I wanted to go through, you know, targets. I want to go through entries with you guys. But the thing is that you have to be very mindful of the size that you're applying in trading, because you want to take you want to make sure that you don't blow up your account. And I'm here right now to tell you that is literally impossible. It's impossible to blow up an account. And it's almost, it's not almost impossible. It is impossible for you to have a down quarter. It's impossible for you to have a down year. And if you have a down year, if you have a down quarter, a month doesn't count because you could have fluctuations. I've, I, I mean, I don't recall ever having a losing month in the market. Like you're talking to a person that never had a losing month in the market. In 2018, I think it came one time where I, I was just above break even because it was a lot of volatility back then. And I was just, I think I ended the, the month with $600 profit. So it was not like a five digit like I usually do, but it was uh it was like six hundred dollars. Okay, so I'm telling you guys, invest in yourself. I'm not saying that you know, like maybe you don't like the way I trade, maybe you don't like me or whatever. Just decide on a person that is resonating with your style of trading and what you want to do, and do this the exact same thing. Don't reinvent the wheel. I have a system that has been working for me and I'm giving the same system to my traders and my traders are able to replicate the results.
So find someone that has already achieved what you want to achieve. That's the bottom line. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. <clears throat> okay. Thanks so much, everybody. This is it for today. We had one trade uh, in Russell, 10 plus points, uh, locked it in. Congrats, everybody, on a good trade. Uh, I hope I answered a ton of questions for you guys today. Tomorrow's the last day. Let's come back with our A game. And I'm really looking forward to see you guys tomorrow. Uh, we're getting one step closer to the option expiration, which is on Friday. Yuck, because I don't like that at all. So be careful because price action is going to get really choppy. Hey, Kay, thanks so much. All right. Now, before I go, I know there are people in here that took my course. What do you guys think of the course? What do you guys think of the power income course? How did that power income course help you understand the market? And how is the trading room helping you put it all together? Phyllis transformed my trading. Awesome. Awesome, Kay. Amazing. And looking forward to watching it again. Uh, yes, we're going to have the course. Uh, the course starts on December 11th. And I'm prepping a surprise for that. Tim is saying, awesome, great education. Uh, Dennis, it's great. And Uncle will show you how it's done. Thank you so much, Dennis. All right. Most of our traders are already long gone after we close the trade. So our veteran traders. Wilson, very informative and very helpful. So thank you so much, everybody. Darren is saying excellent learning experience. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Look at Michael is look. Hey, Michael. Nice to see you in here. Looking forward to the next class. Thank you so much, guys. Hey, guys, this is it. Okay, we're going to wrap it up. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Have a great rest of the day.